Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Today we're going to take a look at the machine library and specifically its pin class. That's most probably going to be the most commonly used class in the entire library. What we're going to focus on is opening up that library or loading it, importing it, etc and then establishing a pin for input and a pin for output and then how we set the value of that being on or off or uh, query the value of that pin being on or off. To get started we need to understand which GP pins or which pins on the Raspberry Pi Pico are available for digital input or output. And in your getting started with uh, the Pico uh, document or manual that you can get from Raspberry Pi Foundation, uh, you will see all the GP pins that are listed. There's 28 of them, and on this wonderful diagram they show them listed uh, in these green boxes. And the important thing to notice is that mechanical pin 1 is not the same as GP1. Uh, these are your mechanical pins, as you would normally see in a DIP package, numbered uh, 1 through uh, 20 and then 21 through 40. Um, but these are the actual pin names as they go all the way back to the RP2040 uh, microcontroller chip. So any of them that are labeled uh, GP with a following number, all the way up to 28, can be used as a digital input or a digital output. Before we dive into the MicroPython source code, I'd like to take a moment to show you our wiring for our test setup here. Here you can see the Raspberry Pi Pico on a breadboard. I've got this pin, which is a ground, connected to the ground rail up here. We've got this pin, which is 3.3 volts out, connected to the high voltage rail, positive voltage rail down below. I'm using a rocker switch as a device that we can turn things on and off with. And that'll give us something to check its input state. And that's connected to GP pin number 16. Uh, in the uh, diagram here, that's with a, a yellow wire. The opposite side of the switch connects back to the Pico through this pin, which comes back all the way to here and that is your 3.3 volts. So in essence, when we turn this switch on, we allow 3.3 volts to go into GP number 16. For an output, one of the easiest things to do when experimenting is to use an LED. Very economical devices, they cost you a couple of pennies, you might need a resistor, another couple of pennies, and if you destroy either one, you're only out a couple of pennies. In the case of this one, we've got our uh, LED connected to the ground rail. On the short leg of the LED, the long leg of the LED is always uh, connected to positive, so we consider that a positive attri attribute. Long legs are always a positive attribute. Uh, and as such, we're going to take that long leg and connect it to a resistor and bring that all the way back to GP number 15. The value of this resistor is just um, uh, 220 ohms, and that's commonly what I'll put on a re uh, LED for experimentation like this. Uh, I do have other videos that will walk you through in great detail about how to select uh, not only current limiting resistors, but how to control LEDs for simple on-off, as well as uh, fading on and off, etc. Furthermore, there are many other videos also covering many different types of switches and how to get behaviors from them that you want that will make your programs perform even better. Now we'll take a quick look at it on our uh, actual breadboard. Um, very much the same thing. We've got our 3.3 volts coming out, our ground going up to the ground rail here, GP16 going through a 220 ohm resistor, into the short leg of an LED, or into the long leg of the LED, the short leg of the LED connected back to ground. Here's our switch. It's got two terminals. One terminal would connect to GP15. The other terminal is going to connect to 3.3 volts via 3.3 volt out pin 
that's on the Pico. Now that we have a few devices to control and to monitor, monitoring an input, controlling an output, let's take a look at how we do this in code. Uh, at the start of our program, I just give a couple of comments describing what the program is. Uh, then we'll go into uh, talking a little bit about what we can do uh, with regard to machine.pin. Uh, we're going to review here again the uh, wiring connections uh, that we just talked about on the Fritzing diagram and on the real uh, breadboard. Uh, so we don't need to go through that. Uh, but this these next few items here are the very important ones, and they are the ones that we'll work with the most. Uh, we can turn an output on or off using any one of these statements. Now, in this case, my object, LED, is an output pin. And to turn it on, I would say LED.on. Turn it off, LED.off. Quite straightforward, quite logical. Uh, another very popular way of, of setting an output on or off is LED.value, and you would give it uh, the value of either 0 for off and 1 for on. You can also ask the system what the current state of an output is, and that can be very handy in certain programs. Uh, so to do that, uh, you could... Uh, put the value, the current value, of the LED into a variable called state or whatever you want to, or you could just do a direct comparison using an if statement. I, in this case, I'm just simply saying state equals LED dot value, and that state uh, variable would then be set to 0 or 1 depending on on or off. The exact same process is used in your uh, uh, program for checking inputs. Uh, to check an input, uh, we could follow the exact same uh, wording. Uh, state equals switch dot value. Zero off, one on. And that would be put in, of course, the variable state. And my object switch is created from the machine.pin class. And we'll discuss that here in a moment. Uh, with most uh, microcontroller programs, you're working with uh, the input and output pins. So you should almost, by standard or default, include or import your machine library. And then import a time library so that you can add uh, pauses or delays uh, in your program as needed. Uh, we're going to create a couple of objects that uh, make it work, make our example work well with our wiring diagram and our, our devices, our LED and our switch. So we're going to create an object called LED which will control our LED. Pretty logical there, huh? Uh, we're going to use uh, machine.pin. That pin is uh, one of the classes within the machine library that allows us to create this object and we're doing it with uh, GP pin number 15, and we're setting that pin as an output, meaning that will output voltage to control a device. We're going to create another object called switch for our switch, and uh, that will be done again with the same class pin. We're using a different GP pin in this case, 16, and we're doing that with the statement machine.pin dot in, meaning input. Up here we had out, meaning output. Now because it's an input, we have to add one more statement. We need to tell it whether we want that input to be pulled high or low by default. So, and that is done with the machine.pin.pulldown. Uh, if you're not familiar with pull up and pull down resistors, um, in that statement in general. We do have another video for that. Uh, you can go to our companion website and look at the index of stories for the Pi Pico in this series and you can find it and review it there. So these two are just objects that we've created from the machine.pin uh, class. And here we're getting into the real meat and potatoes of everything. We're going to have a counter and that's only used here in the loop to show us that stuff is happening. Um, if we just look at an input or an output, uh, it's kind of hard to keep track of those statements changing down below. So I just use a counter and then I'll print it and then we're going to sleep for a half a second to slow down this loop. 
We, uh, as typical with MicroPython and microcontrollers, you will have an endless loop, uh, often called the main loop in your program. And this is where all your work is done. So at the start of the loop, the first thing it's going to do is print out what the current switch value is. Notice I can say print switch is and then switch dot value. Same thing here, switch dot value. So it'll either come back with a zero or a one, meaning on or off. Now here you're seeing how I'm using a comparison uh, to make an action based on that value. So if switch dot value is equal to one, that means the switch is on, so I'm going to turn on the LED. And the simple way to turn on the LED, as we noted up here, LED dot on will turn the LED on. And then uh, in bad format, but good for explanation, I've added an L if, because we really only got two statements. A, a switch can only be on or off. An output can only be on or off. So using L if is kind of silly in this uh, case, but it makes for reading and explaining a little easier. Um, but uh, meaning that if switch was equal to one, we'll do turn the light on or the LED on. And otherwise, L if switch dot value is equal to zero, meaning the switch is off, we're going to turn the LED off. And that's done again with a very simple statement, LED dot off. And then finally, we will print the LED state. So we're going to print the value of that output. And that takes us back to here on that statement. So we can check the value of an output. That's really all there is to using machine.pin uh, in setting up an input and an output. So let's run it and uh, you'll see how this will behave. Right now the switch is off. I will uh, turn the switch on and we see that this LED state is on and if we look here on the breadboard of course the LED is on. And we can turn it on and off at will. That's a very simple, simple and silly demonstration for uh, using inputs and outputs, but it should clearly convey to you how you can query an input and see if the device is on or off, how you can query an output to see if the device is on or off, and how to turn that device on and off. That's pretty much it for the machine.pin class within the machine library. Hopefully that uh, got you a little further along in your journey with uh, working with the Raspberry Pi Pico and MicroPython. As I've mentioned earlier in the video, we've got a number of videos, uh, probably 50 or 60 of them, uh, that explain different aspects of the Pico as well as MicroPython and how to interface a whole wide variety of devices with the Pico. If you have enjoyed this video and perhaps gained a little knowledge, uh, we sure would appreciate it if you would subscribe and click the like button, maybe even the notification bell so that you get notified of future videos. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.